I can't get any leaner than I am right now. And like, you think I'm, you think I'm a before photo. What? Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shalene Johnson and today we're talking about fitness, diet culture, and vacations. So my husband and I are on a 30 day vacation. Is that insane? I mean, we're still working, obviously I'm making a YouTube video, um, recording my podcast, but we're living life and really living life. And this is a bucket list trip for us. Another bucket list trip was being in New York for 30 days, which was also amazing. But for this trip, we have traveled to, let's see, France, Nice, Cannes, 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 Cannes the Cannes Film Festival, I think so I shall say it. Um, we also traveled to Italy. We traveled to Sicily specifically. And um, now we're in Greece. Specifically, we're on the island of Paros, Paros, Paros. Every time I say it, the Greek people here correct me. And then I say it exactly like that person says it. And then the next Greek person is like, <laughs> no, you mean Poros. So like I get it wrong every time, but that's how you spell it. Um, and we were also in Mykonos. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to do this video is because of the questions and comments that I've been flooded with, basically, or primarily I should say, on um, Instagram. So it doesn't matter what it is or how many times I talk about my own beliefs and feelings and how I, I am not going to do one of those what I eat in a day. I've talked about my own recovery, if you will, and realization coming to my senses and recognizing that being in consumer fitness videos as much as I loved it, as much as I enjoyed a lot of it, there was also enough of it that was unhealthy for me that I just decided to stop doing it. And it's hard for me to say that sometimes because I don't ever want to take away from all of the things I loved about it, all of the amazing experiences that I had and the people who still do those workouts. The workouts are great. It just wasn't good for me mentally to be in consumer fitness. And it really made me understand, like I really like all came kind of flooding back on this trip because of the questions I've been getting from people that remind me that that's how I used to think. I used to be afraid to go on vacation. Like I did not want to go on vacation. Couple reasons why. First was, was that I just believed if I took any time off, I would fall behind in work. Everything would disintegrate. I would no longer be successful. The other reason why is because it was so hard for me personally um, to maintain the type of physique that sells workouts that, and I always believed it was, it was never that I was knowingly lying to anyone. I just believed it, this works for everybody else. It just doesn't work for me. Like everyone else can work out for 30 minutes, eat a healthy, balanced, clean diet and have a ripped six pack. That just doesn't work for me. I was someone who loved making workout programs. The diet part of it, I was always really, really uncomfortable with. It never ever I'm sorry, I'm holding my own camera. Um, it never felt right. It never felt comfortable. It never felt uh, like something I wanted to say or something I wanted to promote, but like that just goes with the program. All right, so let's talk about vacations. In the past, this is how I know I've come a long way. In the past, I was so afraid to take a vacation. I feared, what if my safe foods weren't there? What if I ran out of protein bars? What if I ran out of protein powder? What if I had to eat real food? What if we went to a restaurant and I had no idea what the calories or the macros were of that particular item? What if people wanted to go to the pool or work out or, or not work out? They just wanted to like have an adventure for a day and I couldn't work out. That scared me. Literally, that would scare me. Now I'd play along and pretend like it was all no big deal, but I know that like now looking back, what kind of anxiety that provoked. I remember worrying about like what I would wear and not wanting to go to the beach. And what if somebody saw me in a bathing suit and didn't think I was perfect? Okay, this is a true story. This is a true story. I was on a cruise, a fitness cruise as a cel quote, celebrity trainer, I hate that term, but cause it sounds like so. <laughs> Anyways, I was on a cruise as, not like as a vacationer, but more as like the talent, if you will. And so people who were a part of this network marketing organization would get to work out with me because they, you know, they do my workout programs. And there was a new trainer at the time who was like super ripped fit and like 15 years or 10 years younger than me or whatever. And I just remember thinking, well, I'm never like, that's a whole nother body type. Like I ain't get that kind of body type. 
girl's like just ripped abs, like super shredded and super lean. And I'm on the same cruise as her. And I, this is a true story. I overheard women in the elevator talking about this like nearly perfect trainer, nearly perfect body, not that anyone's perfect, and saying like that they felt vindicated and also were considering like maybe not doing her workouts because they were standing behind her somewhere and she was in her bathing suit um, on the deck of this uh, cruise and they saw, are you ready for this? She had cellulite. And I was like, wow. Like that hit me hard. I remember thinking like, I have cellulite. I don't even, I, I, I don't even want to know what my body fat is compared to hers. Like what? So she just lost all this credibility in their eyes because she's a human. And I thought to myself, oh my God, how will I ever? Like, I'll never have that kind of credibility. I'll ne like, first of all, I just need to make sure that no one then ever sees me like in a bathing suit because, you know, heaven forbid that they would see that I'm actually a real person. And P.S. Every woman has cellulite. I mean, I don't know any, I haven't met one yet. I haven't seen one yet. We've been on vacation for like, now we're on day like 24 or five. And I've seen hundreds, maybe even thousands of females bodies, even like little teeny tiny 20 somethings to differing degrees, but we all have it. It's like a natural thing. But I just remember that like threw me for a loop. I remember thinking like, I have to be more careful about what I eat and how I show my body. And I just remember always wanting to look smaller, trying to be less because the messaging was that's more marketable. That was always the messaging. I mean, I remember being asked <laughs> when I showed up to film, this is a true story, I showed up to film a, a video and one of the producers, I'm sorry, not to film it, to rehearse. And we had like probably like another four weeks before we started filming. And this producer was like, you know what would be really cool? Is if like we took some photos of you right now. And then when you came back, we took some after photos to like show your progress. I was like, it, I'm good. I can't get any leaner than I am right now. And like, you think I'm, you think I'm a before photo. What? Like. And I just said, I, I can't, that was one time when I said, I can't do that and I won't do that. Um, later, I kind of, I've done a whole nother video about that. You can go watch the video where I answer the question why I left consumer fitness and you'll hear why eventually I just, I gave in and it really did a number on my metabolism and it did a number on my mental health. And it was just for a very, very short period of time. It was for literally just one video series that very few people even own. Um, so it's probably not the one you think it is, but anyways, eventually I came to my senses and realized like, this is, this is not normal. This is not healthy. And the thing is you slip into it so slowly. Okay. Let me get back to the questions that I'm getting every single day. I can hear the fear in women's questions to me. They're like, while you're on vacation, what are you doing about your macros? Are you counting calories? Are you allowing yourself to have fill in the blank? Do you drink on vacation? Do you enjoy yourself? Like what, how do you get back on track when you get home? Like, dude, this is my life. Like, and I, I eat what I want to eat now. I don't, I, I don't count calories ever. I don't weigh myself. I don't know what my body fat is. I know that I feel amazing. I know that I'm living life to the fullest. I know that I've never felt better about my body and the way that it looks. I've never been more comfortable with my body. I'm wearing bathing suits. I'm pasting, posting photos of myself in bathing suits. I'm dancing by the pool. I'm having the best time ever because I don't know why, I mean, I don't know if it's because like, I don't know if I would be this way if I was still in the consumer fitness industry. Like I'm still working out. I still work out every day, almost every day, but not because I have to, not because the world will stop, not because I feel like I could lose my job or lose my credibility. I do it because I freaking love it. The same reason why I put on makeup every day because I freaking love it. The same reason why I'm eating all the foods that I want, breads and cheese and having cocktails and desserts. Now I'm not eating all of those things all the time, but if I want them, I do. And I just think about like, okay, what's an appropriate portion size for someone who's 5'2". I don't worry about the calories. I don't worry about the macros. I worry about how I feel. And if a certain food makes me feel inflamed or gross, well then I usually don't crave it because I associate it with not feeling well. I don't associate these things with weight gain. 
And it's just crazy to me how every single question people are like, can you tell me, can you show us what you eat for a day on vacation? Can you show us what your workout routine is now? Can you show what, can you tell me what your macros are? Can like everybody want so many women, I shouldn't say everybody, mainly women. We want to know what other women are doing exactly because we've been brainwashed to believe we must be doing it wrong. Because if we were doing it right, we would look amazing. But actually, you are doing it right. And doing exactly what somebody else is doing may not work for you. It probably won't. Because let me just tell you, I've done all the things that somebody else does and it didn't work for me. It just, what works for me is like believing in my health, believing in eating food that's healthy for me, which might not be healthy for you. Eating foods that are not inflammatory for me, but also enjoying some foods that are inflammatory and knowing like, so what, I'm gonna have some french fries. I'm gonna have some bread. Like, especially in Europe, you can eat all the, like, I, at least I can. I can eat all the bread I want. I don't feel as inflamed as I do when you eat bread in the United States because the food here is healthier and it's prepared differently and they don't allow the same fake ingredients in European countries that they do in America. But back to the mentality. So all of these questions just lead me to believe that so many women are not living their lives the way I once was afraid to live my life. I was afraid to go on vacation. I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to control myself. I would slip, that one missed workout would wreck my day, would wreck my mood, that you know, eating bad foods would mean that I'm a bad person. Like, I hate the words like cheat foods and cheat meal. Let me think about that. We're calling you a cheater. And cheaters in my book are people who are married sleeping with somebody else. That's a cheater. And yeah, there's definitely some moral judgment that I might have for someone who's cheating on their spouse. But cheating on your diet, like diet culture and fitness culture, what is it really? And can we escape it? I don't think so. I don't think we can escape it. But what it means is that it's this belief that you are doing things you're doing things wrong, that there are rules and there's a right way and a wrong way and a best way. And you're never going to get it right because there's always a new thing, a new fitness program, a new diet plan, a new diet program, a new diet trend, right? So you're never going to get it right because there's always something new like, oh, you're doing intermittent fasting, but you're only doing it X number of hours. Oh, you had coffee and that broke your fat, like all this stuff. And it's just crazy how those trends, they just keep coming and coming and coming and all really pretty much meant to make you feel like you're doing it wrong and you feel judged and you feel like you have to keep asking other people what they're doing and watching more videos and and buying more programs because you want to get it right. We all want to get it right. We all want to be healthy. We all want to look our best. But when you just keep seeing the same people posting before and after photos, it's like, then are they losing and gaining and losing and gaining and losing and gaining? Like it just doesn't make sense. And one of the number one questions I've been getting, which I don't know if I can answer this succinctly, but I'm just gonna go for it. I keep being asked, what made the difference for you, for me, um, to free myself? And I would love to just give you two or three things that made the biggest difference, but it's a lot of things. It is feeling better. It was removing all of that social media. Like I don't look at or follow any of those people anymore that I used to feel like, oh, that's, fitness inspo, like the people are like constantly showing their food and constantly showing their workouts. And if that is inspiration for you, that's awesome. But for me, it wasn't. For me, it felt like I needed to be doing more all the time. I don't follow those accounts. I don't look at that content. I just don't. I look at people who I find inspirational and I and not triggering for me. Um, it, was, it was learning that, <laughs> this is kind of crazy. It was learning that no matter what I did, pretty much stayed the same. Like I could really, really restrict my calories and exercise a lot and I would stay the same. And I would do that for weeks and weeks and weeks and I'd pretty much stay the same, but just be ravenously craving things that I wasn't allowing myself to have. And then I would have this period where like, you know, just like go screw it and like eat whatever I want and not kill it in the gym, just like take it really easy. And I would basically stay the same. And it was like, so why am I going through all this effort if I basically stay the same and the only thing that would really bother me is that I found myself always getting like really bloated like really bloated and really gassy and now I know that that was a real sign of my nutrient deficits like I wasn't giving myself enough calories I wasn't eating enough of the right real foods I was afraid of real food almost everything I was eating back then because I could control it was uh, you know protein bars and protein shakes because then I knew exactly what it was 
how many calories, the macros, all those things. And so I was kind of afraid. I was afraid to go to restaurants because it's like I would have no way of knowing how many calories I just ate. Your body has a set point. And when you're exercising and focusing, for me anyways, again, this is just me. So don't do what I do because it works for me and it might not work for you. But for me, it was just like realizing like if I just focus on getting strong, and eating foods that I want to eat and just paying attention to when I'm full and when I'm craving because your body kind of like craves what you need and not worrying so much about not worrying at all about these little tiny things like wow it's crazy how much happier you become and it's crazy how much okay I have to tell you this sorry ADHD I remember thinking at a certain point okay Shalene right now you are exercising four and a half hours a day four hours easily four hours a day this is back then. And you're eating very, very little. And I remember thinking to myself, there's no way I will be able to do this indefinitely. How long will I be able to do this for? Can I do this for a few more years? Can I do this for five more years? Can I do this for another year? Like at a certain point, Shalene, you're, you're only going to be able to maybe work out like because of life, maybe an hour. And then what? Will you be able to eat even less or are you going to gain weight? Are you going to gain a lot of weight? I was so afraid of that. I was like, I just don't want to think about it. I just want, it might happen someday, but I don't even want to think about it. And the funny thing is, I was so afraid of that. But then when I started to come to my senses and realizing how bad it was for my brain, my brain health, my ADHD, my mental health, my hormones. I mean, I developed osteopenia, as I say it, you know, the precursor to osteoporosis. Um, I had major brain fog. I had super heightened ADHD, my hormones were horrible, I lost my period, all the things. Yet I was so afraid of what would happen when I could no longer work out for hours and hours. And then when I had my brain scan, again, if you watch you know, the video where I explained the whole long story, that's when I realized like, oh, this is shortening my life. And I love my family too much to worry about how stupid this is. This is such a stupid pursuit. Like that was a really big moment for me. That wasn't the only moment, but that was a big moment for me. And the crazy thing is, is I did gain body fat and I did cut back on my workouts to like, you know, a normal, regular, just to stay healthy level, like an hour a day. You know what's funny is I liked my body so much better. And that's crazy to me because I never, ever, ever would have believed that. I, I believe that, you know, this is going to happen at some point and I'm going to have to accept my body. You know, you hear this about like body acceptance. and I'm like, I guess I'll have to be there someday. But what I didn't realize is how much more I would love my body, how much sexier I feel, how much more into my body I am. When before, I just wanted to hide it. When I was like underweight and super lean, I just wanted to hide my body. I just wanted to look smaller and I didn't want people to look at me. And I guess I was body dysmorphia going on. I, I really don't know. So all of these things like, you know, the brain scan made a big difference, gaining weight and realizing that I felt so much better and I felt so much healthier and recognizing how much more clarity I had and how much stronger I felt and how much more confident and sexy and more like me, I felt like that really helped. It also really helped to have a husband who was very complimentary of the whole process and like you know, just like so much more into my body. It helped that I stepped away from fitness culture. I had to. Like, yes, fitness is still a big part of my life. But for me, it just wasn't healthy. And I just step away from it. Because, you know, frankly, if you gain, but listen, don't even play. If you gain weight and you gain body fat, you are less marketable. Sorry, it's just facts. You just are. And I don't, want, I don't want to deal with that. So I knew in order for me to be able to get healthy, I had to step away um, from that industry. But I still love it. I still think fitness is great for a lot of people. I still think a lot of people can do it and do it and not be triggered. But for me, it just was not healthy. I think other things that really helped me was monitoring my mental intake, like being very careful about what I saw, who I spent time with. I mean, I still have friends and family members who are just frankly, like they're triggering because they worry so much about their workouts, their food, their body. Like you look amazing. Shut up is what I want to say. Like, just shut up. You look amazing. Who freaking cares? Like, stop. Like, it's not fun to be around. It is not fun to be around someone who's obsessed with their body fat, who's obsessed with their macro. People who are obsessed cannot be present, can enjoy life. 
You can't eat a delicious meal. You can't try foods that you have no idea what the macros or calories are when you're obsessed with how it, you can't enjoy those things. You can do it, but you can't enjoy those things. You can't wear things that make you feel <sighs> exposed. Like the, it's just such a jail to be in if you are caught up in that mentality. And I don't blame anyone because I was once there. And I think your journey to free yourself from it is probably gonna look different from mine. Someone asked me if I did any therapy to kind of overcome my, I'm self-diagnosed as an orthorexic. No, I didn't. Not in a traditional sense. I may have done lots of therapy for other things, but for me, it was just like, I think I wasn't stuck in that space for so long that when I realized I had just a little bit of self-awareness to go like, whoa, look at yourself, look at what you're saying, look at what you're doing, look at, think about what you're thinking. Because I, I, I was really good at hiding my thoughts, like I, I, you know, but when I realized like what was really going through my head and the fears that I had, that's when I realized like, okay, time to make a change. And I don't think I was in it long enough that it was a difficult cycle to break, but it definitely took some years. And it started, the last piece I wanted to add was the education. So for me, I'm very persuas persuade, wait, what's the word? I'm easily persuaded by education. Like when people make claims, I'm like, yeah, sh sh show me the research. And so when I had my brain diagnosis, I went into full blown research mode. I'm like, okay, wait a second. I'm unhealthy right now. And I'm probably one of the leading health experts, fitness and health experts in America at the time that my brain was scanned and the time that I figured out like how unhealthy I was. And I'm like, wait a minute, but I have all this credibility as being like one of the leaders, one of the leading women in health and fitness and I'm unhealthy. So what the heck? I guess I really don't understand. I was so caught up and wrapped up and brainwashed in this whole system, culture, whatever you want to call it, that I was like, I, Okay, then I literally took a break from social media and, and posting anything about diet or fitness or anything. And I just said, you guys, like, I don't deserve to be giving you any information or being your leader because I don't know. I clearly don't know what I'm, what I don't know and I need to figure it out. And that was probably a two or three year process of just like learning and, and researching and working with registered dietitians and working with doctors and, um, looking at my own nutrition and look and understanding like um, oxidative stress and the impact that all that excessive exercising and lack of sleep and not enough rest and all those things that you know everyone's like oh well then you didn't understand the pillars of fitness well yeah but like again it's just part of the whole I want to say culture but it's what I got wrapped up in you know and I again I think there's plenty of people who can do it and stay healthy but I just find it very unhealthy that there's a right way and a wrong way. And, um, you know, I, I just have very strong opinions about fitness competitions and the overly lean female physique that we have adopted as the standard of health. Like that that's supposed to be what healthy looks like. We have no idea what that woman's hormones look like, what she's really doing. All I do know is that most of what you, not all, but most of what we see perpetrated as the quote fitness inspo girl is usually someone who in my opinion has very disordered eating habits it's not normal it's not healthy it's not sustainable not all but a lot i mean you look at oh i mean i could make a huge list maybe i should do that a, a video about all of the fitness influencers and and fitness experts who have since come forward and admitted yeah i've either had an eating disorder or I've had very disordered eating or I did some really unhealthy things to look healthy. And there's a whole bunch of people that'll never admit it, but there's a lot who've come forward and said, yeah, it wasn't good. And are they still disordered? I don't know. I just think that life is too short. Be healthy, be happy, figure out what works for you and stop asking other women what they're doing, when they work out, what they eat, because it doesn't matter. You have different genetics, you have a different body, you have a different history, you have a different metabolic flexibility. Everything's different and you need to figure out what works for you so that you're happy and you feel amazing. Because that's really what matters. Your body fat, your weight, who really freaking cares? If you look great, if you like the, even if you look great, don't look great. If you feel great, that's what matters, you know? And health is so much more than just the outside appearance or your BMI or your body fat or your weight on your scale. Who freaking cares? Live life. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you made it all the way to this point, I want you to say French fries for life below in the comments. 
French fries for life, yeah. And also, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what video you'd like for me to do next. Do you want me to do that one about like all the fitness folks? Maybe I can get a few of them to come forward and talk to me about it, who really had to have very disordered relationships with fitness and food in order to stay at the top of their game. List some people below for me, because I, I, I bet you probably know more than I do. So if you list those in the comments, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks for liking this video. Thanks for sharing it. And thanks for making sure that you're subscribed. Love you, mean it, bye.